On Drop Rate is a series all about testing my luck. Each episode I will pick one or multiple activities to do and one specific unique to get from those activities. But there is a twist. I am only able to do this activity until I am exactly on Drop Rate. Kill 5000 Listen Men Shamans to get a Dragon Warhammer. Defeat 512 Venonares to achieve a Treasonous Ring or loot 300 Rifts to obtain an Abyssal Needle are all ideas going by this rule. To spice it up even further, if I manage to get the item within the limited attempts, I get to keep everything I earned including the unique item. If I do not get it however, I have to forfeit half of all the money I earned during the grind to one of you guys, the viewers. But now, let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the On Drop Rate series. This beginning of the video will be a bit different than the other ones because I'm actually going to start off by doing a couple of requirements that will help me on the grind that I'm going to be taking on. I'm going to be going for the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seed from the Elves and I'm going to be pickpocketing them with 85 Thieving. But for that I actually want to get a spell from the Archaeus Spellbook which is called Shadow Veil. This one actually reduces the chance of getting stunned when pickpocketing, I believe by 15%, and for that I need a Kingdom Divided completed. I still have quite some things to do for it, but let's get into it. Before we get into the video, we have a 40 million giveaway to do, so let's go ahead and roll the winner from the Alchemical Hydra video. And the winner is going to be, for the 40 million giveaway, Rhino Fixa. Love the content bro, keep it up. Congratulations to you for 40 million GP. And here the man himself is, accepting their 40 million GP. Hope you enjoy the money. The first thing I have to do is get 100 favor in all the houses. So I'm going to be getting Hosidius right here, have all the buckets. And I already had quite a lot of them done and 75 on Hosidius. So already pretty close, so let's go and hand it in. 100% done, time for Piscarelius. After that, we completed the Queen of Thieves quest to get the Piscorelius Favor Certificate. This gives 10%, so we actually end up at 30%. And now I can use the method to get all the way to 100%, the Sandworms. Maybe not the most exciting content in the game, but it is a very fast grind. You basically just dig up the Sandworms, get them in the buckets, hand them in, and you get Favor. Let's have a quick look. I have 30% favor right now and I have a full inventory of these. Use them on Tynan and now after that we have 38 so it should not take that long. I think last inventory here we go this should be a 100 completion and now we just have a couple of quests to complete before I can actually do the big one a kingdom divided. Completing the Hosidius quest, Depths of Despair, 4k coins, 1,500 agility experience, and a memoir page, and I don't really need the certificate because I have 100%. Another quest completed, the Ascent of Archaeus. And here we have the Tale of the Righteous completed, we now only need to do two more quests I believe, the Architectural Alliance and then the Kingdom Divided itself. Because the Architectural Alliance is a mini quest, you do not get a pop-up for it after completing it, but a really good thing of completing this quest is you get this teleport right here. You can actually teleport to the Xerix Heart, so now you don't have to use the current teleport to get to this area right here. Everything ready in my inventory for the Kingdom Divided, so let's go ahead and complete the quest. There is a couple of boss fights in this quest, but none of them are really that difficult. So during this quest, there are two main bosses, the first one being the demon Judge of Yama. This one protects from magic and ranged all the time, so you do have to kill it with melee. It teleports you in the back of the room and you have to run to the boss and avoid the fire waves. If you do not avoid them, you will take some damage. It's not probably going to kill you unless you're a bit lower level, but in general, it's a pretty easy boss. And depending on what HP it has... There, for example, it teleports you back in the room and you have to run back to the boss. And I think here I do avoid the fire so you can see what it looks like when you do not take any damage. But I kind of just brute forced it and there we go. That is the first boss down for the quest. And the final bigger boss of this quest, I guess, is called, I think, Samphir. And this is a ghost and the mechanics I'm not 100% sure of, but it's also a pretty easy boss. It has these two hands, it protects from magic, so you do have to melee or range it. Also, I think the pools on the ground, you do take damage if you walk into them. Otherwise, you can pretty much just protect from magic, hit the boss, and there are two main mechanics that this boss actually does. When the boss says this, your fate is in my hands, it spawns two hand minions. They have very low HP, so you can literally just one-shot them most of the time. And that is really all you have to do with that mechanic. Your death is at hand is the second mechanic, which is a bit more dangerous. It will spam spawn hands that will land on your face. So you just want to walk all the time basically during this mechanic until it's over. 
And that is the end of the fight. After that, it gets full HP and you basically just get one shot and there's a cinematic, but you actually defeated the boss. But finally, here we go. After those two bosses, we are now done with the Kingdom Divided, which of course is a very useful quest just in general. The Archaeo spellbook now gets a bunch of new spells like Thralls and of course the Shadow Veil, which I've been looking forward to. So let's go have a look at it. And here it is, the Shadow Veil spell requires Earth, Fire and Cosmic Runes, it lasts for 1 minute and also you have a 30 second timer before you can click it again. So you can refresh it essentially every 30 seconds but only need to refresh it every minute. Now I'm already in this room right here and I would advise you guys if you use Rune Light to swap the left click option to pickpocket otherwise you have to right click every time. Do that and now I can just spam it. Now on top of the Shadow Veil spell I do have a dodgy necklace as well which also reduces the chance of taking damage and getting stunned by 25% and on top of all of this I also have the Ardoin Hard Diary which gives a 10% higher chance of pickpocketing successfully so this should not be that hard to do 1024 pickpockets. Well, I've done like 25 attempts and of course now because I start recording it I get really lucky but uh, I've done like 25 attempts and I think in those 25 attempts I got hit like 20 times. So it's not looking like this is going to be an easy grind after all but at least good thing I got the Shadow Veil because without that I can't even imagine how bad it would be. Oh, two crystal shards. That's actually 1 in 35 to get crystal shards from this, but of course the rogue's outfit doubles it. So this could be an insane crystal shard method. It is a good thing that the enhanced crystal teleport seeds are worth quite a lot and they're not very rare as well. Because from 100 pickpockets, you can see the loot on the screen right now that we just hit. It's 33k plus the coin pouches, which I would guess is now around 60k overall loot. But hopefully we get lucky during this video and get that double enhanced crystal teleport seed. So I actually wanted to look up what the chances was of successfully pickpocketing an elf at the different levels and as I am 85 which is just the level to do it, I was wondering if it is a massive difference compared to 99. And there is a difference for sure but you can see here on the screen that it's at 33.94% at level 85 and 392 at level 99 which is not a massive difference but there is one thing that actually does change this quite a bit and that is the thieving cape. I do not have that and it gives a 10% bonus on top of the 39.2% you would get and the hard Ardoin diary does the same thing so you can get at 99 a maximum of 47.4% chance but at my level and my boosts I have a 37.3%. And how percentages work that is an overall of roughly 20% difference in success rate. So we just hit the halfway point, 512 pickpockets, and I do have to say, it is pretty slow for my level. If I was 99 with the Thieving Cape, all the bonuses I could have, I could probably get this roughly in an hour, but it has been two hours for me now, so I'm getting about half of the maximum amount of efficiency you can get. But that is okay, I have still not got the Enhanced Teleport Seed, but there is still a decent amount of pickpockets left to do. Yo, what? <laughs> did you guys see that? She just walked through the wall. How did that happen? I mean, I'm not complaining now. She's stuck again. What the? <gasps> oh, I got it. Oh my god. I actually got it. I was getting kind of close to the end. The loot is on the screen right now. 725 pickpockets and we actually finally got it. Look at that, 4.5 million GP from one of them, and of course because of the rogue's outfit, that is a 9 million worth pickpocket. And of course, basically all the money you get is actually from these enhanced crystal teleport seeds. But uh, we also got 256,000 thieving experience, so overall super successful. I was actually kind of curious how much money you can make if you go all the way from 85 to 99 thieving on doing only the elves, and I counted that if you're on drop rates, you should be making 257 million GP at the current prices of the Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seeds if you go all the way from 85 to 99 thieving. That is a lot of money. Now, another thing you can also do with these Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seeds is you can actually talk to Amrod, which is located right here in Priftinus, and you can turn them into Crystal Shards, which is really good, and they're untradeable as well. So if we talk to him, trade, I'm going to hand in one of these, and you can see I have 44 shards now, hand in one of them, 
Oh, two of them. So, okay, I won't do two of them at the same time. But you can see it's 150 crystal shards for each one of them, which is actually quite a lot. You only need 2,000 of them to corrupt your bow for Adenan, which is quite a grind usually in the corrupted gauntlet and stuff like that. So if you actually just want crystal shards, I would say this is probably the best way of doing it. I'm going to be speculating a bit, but I do think it's a pretty good educated guess I'm going to be doing. So if you look on the screen right now, this is the graph for the enhanced crystal teleport seed the past month. And you can see how much it's gone up the past week. I think this is because of raids 3 and a lot of people are buying these seeds to actually make them into crystal shards for the bow of Ferdinand. It's really good in there. And you can see right now it says 4.5 million, but it also says actively traded price 4.6 million. So I'm going to be putting them in for the medium price and just because of that they're not selling but i'm going to keep them in here for a bit see if they sell and honestly i think they will because there's so many people well there you go they sold that did not take long at all so yeah if you're going to be doing this this is a great time to be doing it but that is going to do it for this video. Without a doubt, a bit of a different video. I don't usually do that much skilling, but I do have some skilling goals in mind that I want to make for this series as well that I think are going to be extraordinarily fun to make and good to watch as well. So I hope to see you there in the future videos. Subscribe if you want to be notified when those are coming out. And until next time, guys, take care and good luck making money.